Mike Tomlin's not going anywhere. That couldn't be clearer at this stage. But you're still going to have people clamoring for it at some point over the coming season. Good morning to you. Good Friday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Steelers. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates, the other two teams in town that I cover. I saw through rookie camp, all three weeks of OTAs and mini camp, a version of Tomlin that looked, well, exactly like all the other versions of Tomlin. He loves his job. He loves football. He loves being around the players. He loves especially being around the younger players. The older ones, once they get established, he'll just let them do their thing. But the younger ones, the opportunity that he has to get involved in raw teaching not just coaching, but instruction to get right in there alongside the positional coaches or the coordinators and to be able to throw in his own two cents, there's joy that this man experiences. Nobody could be that good of an actor, trust me. Watching the way he is, hearing him, uh, walking across the parking lot with him as I did one day last week and hearing the jokes that he was exchanging with the various players who were around him. Gunnar Olszewski was one of them. Danny Smith was another. I can't even remember everybody right now, but he just, his head was on a swivel looking for someone to engage. This is someone who milks every moment that he's involved in what he's doing. So he's not retiring. He's not giving anything up anytime soon. He has, at different points over his tenure, made known to some people inside those walls that he'd think about it, that he'd consider it. There's certain circumstances that might trigger it, but it never amounted to anything. And in all likelihood, it was just probably some of those down periods that you and I and everybody has. We all get bummed out. We all think we just want some big dramatic change of scenery. And maybe in most cases, we really don't. And man, I would hope that we've all long since passed any notion that he'll ever be fired. He won't. He won't. Art Rooney II will not fire Tomlin. Not now, not a couple years from now, not five years from now, if Tomlin is still coaching. It won't happen. It just won't. But we're going to talk about it. We will. Oh, it's not going to be worth anything in late June. But the first really bad loss to a bad opponent, we're going to talk about it. The first couple of games where the Steelers just might not have that bite or it looks like the offense hasn't improved and we're all blaming Tomlin, not without cause, for keeping Matt Canada on board We're going to talk about it. How about the first time that John Harbaugh, yeah, he's the one that this usually comes up with. The first time that John Harbaugh throws a scheme at the Steelers for which they have no on-field in-game answer, we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to be honest with you, and please consider that this is coming from somebody who's been richly critical of Tomlin on various subjects at various points over his tenure and from someone who I'd like to think asks the fair questions of the man. Some people call them hard questions. I don't consider any questions to be hard because I don't consider asking a question of a football coach to be a hard thing. I'd like to think that they're fair questions. He might really hate them and disagree, but I think they're fair. And within that, there's a part of me that wonders if we as people who follow the Steelers, but in particular you as a fan of the team and of the franchise and its history, will come to just say, you know what? He's here. He's our guy. Let's just get behind him. Because the truth is, when he's gone under whatever circumstances that might occur, 
we, all of us, myself included, are going to look back on his tenure and say, hey, that guy was pretty good. There could be some, you know, lingering resentment if he were to go out on, let's say, this continuing streak of not succeeding in the playoffs. But that stuff fades, you know, Uh, the negative tends to fade over time. It really does. We live in the negative in the moment in general. But if I told you, here's here's one for you. How many times have you heard or spoken yourself that Tomlin inherited Cowher's players? Only reason he won is because he inherited everything from Cowher. And then when somebody corrects you, (laughs) tells you that the year before Tomlin took over, that Cowher won eight games, finished 500, missed the playoffs. Nobody, nobody, nobody talks about this. Why? Because we think of the positive. We think of the the jaw jutting out as the punter would come off the field and he'd ream out poor Josh Miller or stuffing that, uh, what was that photograph, the overhead photograph that was taken into that referee's pocket on his way off at halftime. Uh, We think of Cower in Detroit with Jerome winning the Super Bowl just a few months earlier. This season didn't even happen for most people. And there were injuries and whatever else. Every coach has to deal with injuries. But Tomlin came along and won with a team that had just gone 500 the previous year. We just erased that. Doesn't, doesn't exist. When Tomlin is gone, he's going to be that guy for a lot of people. He's going to be, hey... This isn't how Tomlin would have done it. We will remember many more of his positive traits than the ones that, you know, will get on our nerves now. So why not just kind of embrace that now? You have no idea, Pittsburgh, what kind of coach you'd get next. No idea. You at least know what you have and what you can appreciate with this one. When we come back, J1Q. Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George. LGKG is a personal injury law firm in Western Pennsylvania that represents people hurt in car accidents or who need help with workers' comp or medical malpractice. When the attorneys at LGKG make you a promise, they keep it. They've been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. LGKG's been AV rated, the highest rating a law firm can receive, and They've been designated super lawyers. That's actually a thing for over 15 years. It's a rare combination. LGKG has offices in Cranberry, Newcastle, Beaver Falls, Butler, and Elwood City. Learn more about them by visiting lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. LGKG. Today's J1Q comes from Rick, who in reference to my mentioning on yesterday's show that the offensive line looked legit while going 7-2 and two down the stretch last season. Rick says, Omar Khan didn't think it was legit. That's why Isaac Selmalu made Herbig, Broderick Jones, and even Darnell Washington are here. Teams let us run to a certain degree because the running game wasn't controlling the score. In fact, the other team was often ahead in the fourth quarter. They were bottom 10 in yards per carry, even with those nine games. This year will be even better because of those moves that have been made, and I pray to God because we move from the bottom five to the top 10 in play action. That's a lot of good stuff there, Rick. It's not an actual question, but I like the input and the feedback that you had there. Where play action is concerned, I can tell you that that is an objective. Now, you can roll your eyes at that, and you would have plenty of justification in doing so. There's every reason for everyone in this city to be conditioned 
to roll their eyes when it comes to play action because it was something that Ben Roethlisberger hated doing. So anytime it would come up, everyone would just go, oh, yeah, right, play action. Yeah, they're going to do that. But Ben's not here anymore. And I don't get the impression from any of the quarterbacks in the fold, nor the offensive coordinator, that they're not serious about installing it. And, infinitely more important, making it work. But, as someone who sounds like you know a lot of football, you'll also know that nobody takes your play action seriously unless your running game is legit. So I feel like there was a lot of value to be gained just by the Steelers putting up that average of 146.4 yards per game over that 7-2 and two stretch. I really do. I hear you. I don't see the Steelers as being uh, certainly not explosive in the running game. They reached the point where they became consistent and they did push lines back. But in fairness to them, you also have to consider that whenever you have a, a high rushing average per carry, you're breaking a few. And the Steelers didn't break hardly any. And when I say uh, the ones that they did were 20 yarders, 25 yarders, there was never one that was just, whoa, you know, that really runs up the average. And I still don't think you're going to see a whole lot of that. I don't think you're going to see it certainly from Najee Harris, who has never been that guy, including in college. Jalen Warren has an opportunity to do that. Maybe if you try something clever with Calvin Austin, he has the ability to run away from people. But we're throwing ifs into the equation. I do think that if you have a running game that consistently knocks people back three, four yards, you'll have enough to put together a decent play action, especially with all the options that Kenny Pickett now has. I'm with you completely on your assessment of the upgrades of the offensive line. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We're going to do another one of these on Monday. 